My name is Sabrina Romanov, and this is part two of building SaaS with AI. In my first video, I covered having a grand vision for your product and scoping it down to a feasible version one MVP. And in this video, before we start getting into hands-on coding, we're going to set up the developer tools and the tech stack. Um, and I'm just going to use the one that I typically use for MVPs, which is Next.js, a full stack web app framework, Firebase for the database, Vercel for deployment, and something simple like GoDaddy for managing the website domain. In terms of developer tools, and this is what we'll install first, I'm currently playing around with warp Dev, which is an AI powered terminal, super cool. Um, Cursor is an AI powered code editor. It's a fork of Visual Studio Code. It streamlines the process of AI driven coding or AI assisted coding. And the last item, Claude Artifacts, it's a new feature from Claude where you can write a bunch of code and it'll even preview the front end. I would mark this as optional. You can either write most of the code base in Claude Artifacts and then move it over to Cursor, or you can write it initially from Cursor. Um, for this video series, I'm gonna try just sticking to Cursor AI, but I often do use Claude Artifacts as well, so I listed it here. So now let's go through the process of installing each of these, starting with warp.dev. Let's go to the website. And it's basically a terminal reimagined with AI. It has like smart autocomplete. You can even ask questions in natural language, like how do I merge this branch to main or how do I do something like this, expose a Docker port. And then it literally gives you an answer that you can then immediately run within the terminal. So here, just click download for Mac or whatever operating system you use. Unfortunately, it doesn't have Windows right now and open it up and it should look like this. Okay, we're gonna go into dev. And then from here, you can type anything. How do I create a Next.js project? Next.js again is the web app framework that we're gonna use. So here's the command to create it. And then it auto completes it here for you. So you can immediately hit enter to run. And there's a lot of new other features as well. I just started playing around with warp.dev a few days ago and, and really like it so far. But I would say kind of the most obvious standout feature is being able to type natural language questions like how do I do this? And you, you may not remember the commands or don't know the sequence of commands to run and it'll give you suggestions like here are exactly the, the commands that you can run in the terminal. The next tool I'm going to download is cursor AI. It's an AI powered code editor. You can download it for free. So just click download for free and then it'll download it. And it's pretty cool. So you get answers from your code base. You can even refer to specific files or documentation. You can apply just one change or apply all changes in a file. You can ask follow-up questions. Like if it makes a suggestion to code something a certain way, you can ask a follow-up question clarifying you know, why it's designing it that way. Okay, so when you open it up, it should look like this. And then you're gonna have to open a folder containing your project. Okay, so those are the two developer tools I'm gonna use. And now we're gonna set up the, the tech stack that I typically use. Okay, so let's go back to warp.dev. And let's say, how do I install Next.js? Now my environment's already set up where I can run this command and it'll actually work. But if you're watching this, your environment's probably not set up with Node or NPM. So I might say something like, what is NPM? Like, what is this command? Okay, so it's a Node package manager and it's the default package manager for Node.js. So here I just created a new tab within my warp terminal and I'm gonna ask what are all the steps and prerequisites to install Next.js. And once you do all of the setup, by the way, you only have to do it once. Once you set up Node.js, NPM, Next.js, all, and all the other things, you can use this repeatedly for any future MVPs you wanna build. So, okay, so let's look at Warp's answer. So to install Next.js, you'll need to follow these steps and meet the following prerequisites. For example, install Node.js. You can download and install Node.js from blah. Blah, 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 a code editor, which we already have. So that's cursor, it's our code editor. Okay, so let's see. So, so let's go with the first prereqs and how do I install Node.js? Okay, so I'm using a Mac. Install Homebrew if you don't have it already. You can even click this to actually run it. So this button here says run in terminal. So that'll run the command directly. And then once homebrew is installed, just do brew install node, again, run in terminal. And to verify that they're both installed, we can run both of these commands. So run in terminal, you can see uh, the commands down here and then run them. And you can see the versions for node and NPM. Another quick check is like when you type something like node, it should turn green. That means it's installed in your system. Okay, so now we've done the first prereq. Okay, installing node.js. We already have a code editor, which is cursor. 
And then now we're gonna install Next.js. Open the terminal, navigate to the project directory, initialize a new Next.js project using this command. All right, now that we've installed all the prerequisites, now we're gonna create a Next.js project. I just opened a new tab in the terminal by clicking up here. I can command T if you're on Mac. And then here I'm gonna ask, how do I create a Next.js project? Okay, so here it auto-populated the command line and I'm just gonna change this to the name of my app, which is Remix. I'm gonna select all the default settings here. Yes, TypeScript, yes, ESLAN, Tailwind, no to source directory, yes, app router, no, customize. So I actually just clicked enter on all of them and just selected the default options. So now LS is to show what's in this current directory and now you can see our directory here, Remix. All right, so we're all set up with Next.js, the full stack web app framework. We initialized a, a sample project using warp. If you enter the directory, so CD change directory, CD remix, and then click LS. This lists everything in that directory so you can see our sample project here. The next thing we're gonna do is just sign up for Firebase. We won't be using it for at least a couple more videos. So if you just Google Firebase on Google, this is what comes up, Firebase, Google's mobile and web app development platform. Go ahead and click on that. And then it should look something like this, welcome to Firebase, and then get started with the Firebase project. You don't have to do anything besides sign up for it right now. Next, we're gonna sign up for Vercel, which is what I use for deployments. Another popular option is called Heroku. So you can choose whichever one you like. Here's Heroku, Vercel.com. So it should look like this. Click sign up on the right-hand corner. Just click hobby and then just go through the sign up process. And then once you get in, it'll look something like this. So you can see here an overview of all of my different projects. For managing the website domain, I just use GoDaddy. And when you go to deploy the app, what I usually do, at least for me, I like to deploy my apps as subdomains on my primary website newsletter, sabrina.dev. GoDaddy is pretty easy. There are other alternatives as well. All right, that's the end of this video, walking through my usual tech stack for MVPs and the developer tools I use. In the next video, we're going to start actually building our MVP, taking the spec we worked on in part one of this series, plugging it into either cursor or Claude artifacts to create the initial code base, and then basically go through each feature one by one, implement it, test that it works, implement it, test that it works. In this video, I just wanted to talk about setting up the tools for development as well as my usual tech stack so that I can refer to this video later on. Once you do all of this once, you don't have to repeat it. You can use this tech stack for all future MVPs that you build out. My name's Sabrina Romanov. Hope you enjoyed this video. Hit like, hit subscribe, drop a comment below if you have any questions.